Hey guys, I for one welcome our robot overlords, and I'm thrilled by the progress they've been making recently. These innovative mobile machines come in all shapes and sizes, and are making their way into many industries. However, what you may not realize is that outside of a warehouse or factory floor, their usefulness is still rather limited. Although often able to autonomously navigate through complex and difficult environments, which is indeed pretty impressive on its own, in real life they often just follow pre-recorded paths or there's a person off camera driving the robot with a remote. Several companies aim to offer their autonomous robots for package delivery, because obviously packages rule the world, but most of the time a lot of these impressive machines are merely being used as slightly smarter remotely operated cameras. The most common job description of a robot dog today is inspecting areas too dangerous for humans and monitoring progress at construction sites by repeatedly taking pictures. But what if we'd like to use our robots for more complex tasks? In this video I will propose a different way of interacting and collaborating with these machines. One that uses immersive augmented reality and allows humans and robots to effectively join forces in a productive way. This is a simulated spot in augmented reality and I'm able to interact with it using this little controller. I can select the robot, change its pose, adjust various other things and display its working status that may come handy. And most importantly, I can click anywhere in the space around me and tell the robot to go just there and define what its final heading should be in one quick command. Imagine you're standing here and simply point at the place to tell the robot where to go. Similarly, since this robot is equipped with an arm, I can tell it to pick up objects just by pointing at them like so. And then place them wherever I want. And I have perfect control over the desired placement of the object. Let's do it one more time, just for the show. So a pickup. And then we place the cube right on top of the other one. And the same goes for other robot types. So this is a standalone robotic arm, similar to what you may find on any production line. We can for instance display its work envelope, which shows us pretty much how far the arm can reach. And similarly to our spot, we can instruct it to grab an object just by pointing at it and tell it where we'd like the object to be placed. This is extremely intuitive and fast. I'm not trying to drive the arm manually here, I'm just giving it these high level commands and letting it to figure out the rest. This also gives me quite a lot of precision because I can see the object's intended placement and orientation before the arm is instructed to put it there. In this scenario, we have a knife switch and a hand wheel of some sort that we need to physically manipulate, and a robot dog standing by. Just by clicking on the active area here, I can instruct the robot to perform a pre-programmed task and turn the switch on. Obviously, in terms of computer vision, this is not completely trivial, but it's not rocket science either. And this hand wheel needs to be assembled first. So the first step is to pick up the wheel, fit it on its axis, and then, using my controller's touchpad, I can set the rotation I'd like the robot to perform. And it then does as instructed. Now, if you know anything about how robots actually work, you may be thinking I'm just running conveniently scripted demos here. To some extent, that's true, since my main objective is to present the user interaction element here. But the inverse kinematics and physics are quite realistic, and the atomic operations I'm chaining together are pretty standard and simple. By no means this replaces robots' own need for sensors and computer vision. But the only really complicated and unique thing we need to achieve such complex interaction is a reliable translation from my frame of reference to robots' point of view. I'll touch on that in a bit, but first let me give you one more example. In this situation, we have our arm surrounded by assorted colored building blocks, and I've placed several virtual target stacks for each color conveniently within its reach. 
When I tell the arm to run its program, it will start picking up blocks and sort them by color. And it will keep doing so as long as there's some free space in any of the stacks and there are cubes around left. The next step is to make something with these sorted blocks. So here is a really simple design I made earlier. I will place it where I want it to be built and then instruct my spot here to start working on it. Now I can just let it do its thing. It will keep looking for material in our sorted stacks, depending on the color it needs. And then it will put these blocks in place as defined by the blueprint. And of course, any work goes faster when you have some help. So here I gave our spot a twin body. They will try not to bump into each other and just repeat the same thing over and over until the job is done. Now what I find most interesting about this whole concept is how much information you as the operator get in a quick glimpse. Not only you define where things go visually in the physical world, but you can also see the progress of the work and which specific part of block each robot is working on. Those are the highlighted blue ones in the design. You can see the stacks the arm is using, you can see how far it can reach, so you can intuitively predict any kind of problems. And you can also intervene and affect the program in real time at any point. So here I'm pulling one spot out of its routine and I'm telling it, hey you, stop what you're doing right there. Go and grab the brown cube. And as it does that, I will tell it to continue the program again, which means it will find a suitable slot for the cube in the design and then it will resume the normal operation again. As you can see, in contrast to driving each robot individually, one operator can manage not one, but a swarm of machines easily at the same time. Not only this can be useful on job sites, but also may come handy when training their AI. This will go on for about 30 minutes or so, and I'm not gonna bore you with all that. But now that we've established why this might be a good way of interacting with machinery, I'm going to talk a bit about some technical aspects and how all this works. Then we'll come back here to see what these guys have built. The hardware I'm using to see, control and record all this might be familiar to you if you've seen my older videos. It's still the same modified but rather antiquated iPhone and Daydream setup. The AR industry has been in quite a limbo for a while and I'm definitely looking forward to upgrading. This runs the front end of Phantom, the hardware independent platform I've been building for some time. This is responsible for all the user interactions, interface and rendering you've been seeing. And if you are familiar with my work, you won't be surprised that the real magic actually happens in the cloud. A lot has happened since I last published something, and this is not the point where I'd like to get into too many details. The important part is that the brain of the operation is written in JavaScript, TypeScript to be exact, runs in Node.js on a remote server, and based on my input, controls not only the robots, but also the user interface and pretty much everything you've seen. So if you're thinking about how would an actual physical robot interface with all this, the answer is why are real-time APIs specifically designed and tailored for such purpose. Now how do we establish that reliable reference frame translation I mentioned earlier? The first idea that comes to mind is to use a big shared reliable map of the environment. And over the past few years I've spent an enormous effort trying to build exactly that into Phantom. A dynamic 3D map updated in real time, independent of hardware and the underlying motion tracking software each participating device is using. In such an environment, collaboration of various different devices would be quite trivial. And despite some successes down the road, as you see here, this is still an elusive goal. I did all the maths, dug way deeper into visual odometry and slam than I ever expected to only to realize the fundamental limits of this effort aren't technical or mathematical, but rather political. So here's a brief recap. Any piece of hardware tracking its movement in the physical space without any external aid uses something called SLAM, or simultaneous localization and mapping. There are various flavors of SLAM, many open source, and they all come with their own benefits, flaws, and most notably accumulate different amount of drift and errors over time. These errors can be compensated for and accuracy improved 
And I was actually quite successful in improving ARKit's accuracy in the cloud and building a somewhat solid map out of whatever data I was able to get from it. Needless to say, this was a pretty hardcore endeavor. Even detecting ARKit's own loop closures is a major issue and that's just how these packages are designed. Not for much serious work, but good enough for stage demos and making toys. The real trouble begins when you'd like to feed such an updated map and corrections back into your device. Today, that's impossible. Hardware makers lock developers out of accessing the inner workings of their algorithms and won't let you modify the underlying post graph and the map the device is internally working with. You'd have to run your own SLAM subsystem on every device you're dealing with, which often isn't feasible because of other roadblocks. On top of that, more and more AR hardware these days relies on this functionality being baked into silicone, providing users with just basic motion tracking, depth sensing, meshing, black box capability. This unfortunately stands in the way of some serious multi-platform spatial computing. So until we change everyone's minds with some great use cases, we'll have to get a little bit more creative. Just as we can easily estimate humans pose these days with open CV or neural networks, we can track and estimate robots location and pose from the human operator's vantage point. All actors can then track their motion using whatever sensors and SLAM implementation they come with. This is how we establish a rough estimate of the transformation between their coordinate systems. And then we will update this estimate whenever we get the chance. Then we need to constantly expect a certain level of error and compensate for it. And that's fine. Humans have been collaborating for some time without telepathically sharing precise digital maps, right? Say we want our robot to find and pick up a thing. Not only we give it a rough estimate of the target coordinates, but also provide a bunch of local contextual clues, such as still frame and partial point cloud, so that it can actually precisely locate the object or point of interest in space. Phantom will provide exactly that kind of data. And this is where I'll leave the tech talk for now. Let's get back to our simulated construction project. Well, you may already see where this is going. Obviously, this is still just a naive simulation and a demo, but I hope I convinced you this kind of human-machine interaction, or visual interface if you will, offers some unique benefits and is quite possible. My next step is to work on the aforementioned technical challenges with robotics companies to make something really useful out of it. Each implementation will be slightly different and likely uniquely challenging, but I strongly believe in this approach. With some effort, the technology can be made really precise, reliable and allow us to do great things we weren't able to do before. So if you are in the industry, like what I'm talking about and believe there are some concrete use cases for what I'm presenting here, I'll be more than happy to talk about it some more. We need to push the boundaries of what's possible. On a related note, well so far I've been showing you virtual robots stacking virtual cubes on top of one another, I've been also experimenting with parametrically generated designs and novel construction techniques in the real world. Imagine you can design complex, large-scale and freeform structures in augmented reality. You can see your design in the intended context, while some intelligence in the cloud constantly guides your hand and makes sure your design actually makes technical sense and is buildable. Then it generates all the necessary 3D printable parts for you, as well as instructions on how to prepare the rest of your building material using more traditional techniques. And then it guides you through the whole assembly process step by step, as if it was just one big Lego. Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to put it all together by hand and had a bunch of smart mechanical puppies to help me? More on that soon, follow this channel for future updates. Oh, look at that. Did you guys build a Mario while I was talking to these nice people? You're such dorks. One last thing. If you're an engineer, find all this as exciting as I do and would like to join me in this effort to make it a reality, look me up and let's talk. In particular, I'm looking for people who understand computer vision, robotics or anything I've mentioned here. This is a company after all, with like a business plan and stuff, and way too much work for one crazy person. There, who's a good boy? Oh, you're all good boys. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.